Separation season is upon us. There's a market shift going on right now inside of real estate. Some agents are gonna thrive while some others are gonna fall off and it's up to you which one you're gonna become. What's up guys, Louis Galt here. Today I am joined by my business partner and one of my best friends, Mike Sherrard. And this is gonna be the first of three in a video series about shifting with the market. Today we're gonna to kind of talk about a lot of different strategies that you can take to make sure as this market starts to move and change different directions that you are ready to thrive inside of those. Okay, two quick things before we bring Mike on. We want to share the love with everyone today. So if you subscribe to this channel, if you like the video and comment with your biggest takeaway, you'll be entered in to win a free membership to the Social Agent Academy, which is Mike's social media program. Break it down everything you can imagine from Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Google, like everything in there. It's a phenomenal program and you will be entered in if you just simply subscribe, like and comment on this video. The second thing guys is if you want to partner with us, if you're interested in speaking with Mike and myself about what we do, how our group works inside of markets like this and how our agents continue to thrive, then reach out in the link in the description and the pinned comment to book a one on one call with us and we can tell you about how we could help your business grow. So without further ado, let's bring on Mike. All right, here we are, guys, joined by one of my best friends, one of my business partners, Mike Sherard. Mike, how's it going? Good, good. Super excited to, you know, to dive into this topic, one that's super relevant right now. And, uh, you know, you and I behind the scenes have jammed out about it for quite some time. And yeah. I think this is going to be a really valuable one for people to really prepare for what's coming and, and really best set themselves up to, you know, gain market share and have massive success during a time where a lot of agents are backing off. Yeah, absolutely. It's the conversations that that we're having within our group. Everyone should be having this. And I think that's why this is so important to talk about now. Um, so people can be prepared as things are shifting. So we're going to jump right in, guys. Mike, if people aren't familiar with you just quite yet, why don't you just give us a kind of brief intro about who you are, what you do, and then let's jump right in. Yeah, definitely, guys. So my name is Mike Schrader from uh, the Northern Neighbors to probably many of you up here in Canada. And, uh, you know, social media is my forte. I was the top producer for multiple years at my past brokerage and really levered social media to skyrocket my business because probably like many of you, I was a new agent in a new city. I had no money and I didn't have a sphere. Uh, so the only way that I knew to really get in front of people was to leverage modern strategies. And that's what I share with a lot of people on my YouTube channel right now um, and really kind of help people take their business to the next level without having to rely solely on prospecting. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen, guys, and we'll just dive straight in because I want to be respectful of your time and make sure that you get the most out of this presentation. Let's do it. All right, guys. So in this presentation, what we're going to be doing is showing you how to prepare during to dominate during a market shift, uh, because we all see it happening. We see the market tightening. We see things going a little bit sideways right now. And a lot of people are kind of curious as to what's going to happen. But there's a lot of steps you can do in order to really set yourself out, uh, you know, apart from other agents right now, make sure that you're best prepared to dominate and, uh, you know, separate yourself from the market uh, competition, because we know that a lot of agents came into the business over the last couple of years here. Um, so I'll give myself a quick little introduction kind of on top of what we already did but you know just to talk to you about the fact that we practice what we preach i've been recognizing every social media list related to uh, my city my province and actually in north america and i am with the experience partners with louis uh where i've been able to break every record uh based on personal attraction at exp with the most personally sponsored agents and the most personally sponsored actively producing agents at the company um but we're going to dive straight in and talk to you guys about what you could really do to kind of focus on actionable takeaway steps right now that are going to separate you from the competition so the number one thing that you want to really start with is over delivering on value by educating your clients and this is a really important one because Right now, with interest rate shifting and with so many kind of things happening on a weekly basis, you have more excuses now than ever to reach out in a value-driven way to your clients. When the market is either hot or when you know it's kind of stagnant, we run into this situation where we don't really have a good excuse to reach out to our database, where it's essentially you know calling up your database and seeing if they know anybody that's looking to buy or sell. But right now, with all of the activity happening with rates and things like that, you have a really cool situation where you can reach out to your clients and explain to them what their buying power is. You can explain to them what the months of inventory means and what the average days on market means. And all these kind of, you know, really key critical pieces of information that people need in order to make an educated decision on whether they're buying or selling. This is the best time to do that. Now, 
The next thing that's really important for you guys is to really establish strategic partnerships. And this is one of the things that Louis and I really take pride in, especially where we just spoke in an event down there in Denver, where we have a partnership with one of the top lenders down there. And by having these partnerships, you're able to kind of alleviate some of that stress of creating this content or doing a lot of research that you otherwise might have to, because they know it, right? They know it better than we do. And if you can align with these strategic partnerships related to, you know, lending, related to title. Um, related to all kinds of different things that are going to be part of the real estate transaction. It's going to allow you to really create content easily, but show that you've got these partnerships to make sure that your clients have a really strong kind of sense of, I guess, comfort when they're working with you because you're going to have the right information. And I really want to talk to you guys about why it's a good time to buy and sell, right? Because it's always a good time to buy. It's always a good time to sell for somebody. And a lot of people think that when the market shift, when it tightens, it's going to be bad for buyers or it's going to be bad for sellers. Sellers aren't going to maybe make as much money as they otherwise would have months ago. And buyers, you know, might have to pay higher interest rates than they otherwise would have months ago. So what this really is important for is making sure that you guys have the knowledge in order to educate people as to why it's always going to be a good time to buy or sell. And the reason being is because, you know, and then, you know, I'll pass this over to you, Louis, because I know that you're really active right now with clients is you know, I got started in a really difficult market. And for me, it was really important to help educate clients and saying, hey, you know, your property is $500,000. You know, months ago, you might have got 540. Now you're going to get 500. But if you're moving up to 700 or 800, it's all relative. So if you're losing 40K on the sale of your house, and you move up to a property 50% more expensive, then you're going to be saving $60,000 on the purchase of that property, right? And that really helping educate people on what this means in terms of the long term picture, because unfortunately, a lot of people are only thinking about the short term and the now and not how their decisions are actually going to affect them in the many years to come, because most people are hopefully going to be living in that property for many years to come, right? Yeah, it's, it's such an interesting part of the puzzle, you know, because Especially with newer agents, I find, you know, we focus on marketing, how to get leads, how to advertise yourself, how to get in front of people. But when you get in front of people, if you don't have the knowledge, you're at a severe disadvantage at a listing presentation versus someone who's done their homework, who knows what they're talking about. So, you know, I think one of the biggest points here for me is strategic partnerships, because I can't take in that knowledge, you know, and all of it and, and have it all at my disposal. But having partners who do have it and can speak to it at length is invaluable. I mean, it's just, it's changed my whole um, business since I've started having these strategies. So, you know, once a week we get on calls with, um, you know, our top lender in the state and um, our top title rep. And we go over exactly what's happening week by week by week in the market. So we know what's happening. Our team knows what's going on. And but because we're on those calls, we can break it down into layman terms and explain to our clients how it's going to affect them. So being proactive with your knowledge of this market and of the market in general is, I would just say, it's one of the most important things to do. Because if you don't know what you're talking about, you can't advise people in the correct manner. Yeah, definitely. And, and you know, for me, that was one of the things that really made a big difference when I got started in real estate is, you know, as a new agent that maybe doesn't have as much experience or maybe, you know, isn't as savvy with, you know, the the market, the more you can start to educate yourself, the met, the the less people are going to ask how many years have you been in the business? How old mm -hmm. are you? All these things, because they're just going to see you as a resource. All people are looking for is the answers. And if you can give them clear answers with context, they're never going to ask your experience, which is going to be a really great way as maybe an agent with less experience to separate yourself from the other agents. So let's yep. start diving into a couple more things that are going to be really important here. And I'll kind of break these out and just kind of go straight into a lot of these. So the one thing that you really have to be mindful of too, is being willing to adapt and willing to learn. And this is a big one. And this is one where I see a lot of agents struggle because as we always talk about, I say this in my stage presentations is the ones that win in business. So they're not the ones with the most experience or the biggest budget. It's the ones that are most willing to adapt. And mm -hmm. that's because a lot of these agents that have been in the business for 20 years, they stay stuck in their ways. They're very traditional ways. And when the market shifts and buyers and sellers are now looking for more from their experience of working with an agent, like leveraging video and some of the things we'll talk about, they stay stuck and they start to fall behind the curve, which 
really opens up this wide gap for you as maybe a less experienced agent to really kind of, you know, niche yourself into a space of over delivering on value in an innovative, unique kind of industry leading way. Mm -hmm. And being able to learn is an important thing because unfortunately, a lot of people stop learning in post-secondary education or wherever they stopped education wise, because the repercussions when you're in the education system are immediate. You fail, you have to go retake that test or do whatever. You have to learn. You're forced to learn. Otherwise you don't pass. Whereas in real estate, a lot of people kind of stop learning because the repercussions are delayed where it's going to happen six, 12, 18 months down the road when you're broken, and you have no clients. So mm -hmm. what I really want to help you guys understand is, you know, video is going to be huge right now, right? Video is king. We talk about it on, you know, every single platform in terms of both long form on YouTube, as well as short form on things like TikTok reels and also YouTube shorts. And this is going to be a really important play here, because as we're going to talk about in other videos, and also some of these upcoming slides is the ones that double down on brand and the ones that really focus on becoming recognized during these more kind of interesting times and slow times are the ones that are going to come out this other side with massive market share. You know, I, I watched a video the other day. And what they were saying is that, you know, this is actually what uh, Pat Pat David was saying is that we're now in a time in business where it's no longer who you know, but it's who knows you. And with video, what it allows you to do is really expand your reach of who knows you to the point where, again, people are going to continue to consume your content and see you as the valuable resource during this time and reach out to you and generate leads. So YouTube is one that we swear by because it's actually controllable. Unlike a lot of the algorithms on the other platforms, unfortunately, you're kind of just posting, doing your hashtags and hoping to God it takes off. Whereas with YouTube being an SEO driven platform owned by Google, if you know how to properly optimize your videos, like shown in the Social Agent Academy, which again, you can win uh, if you just drop a big a comment on this video, it really is going to show you guys how to optimize to rank. And when you can prove to rank, even as a smaller new channel, it's really going to give you this opportunity to create efficiencies in your business. Because one of the cool things about content is it's a one to many scale versus traditional prospecting is a one to one scale. So the more that you can create leverage in your business of your time by doing something once and reaching many people, this during this kind of, you know, shifting market is really going to separate you from other people and also making sure that you're leveraging the massive organic engagement and reach of short form content. But also in terms of, you know, not just willing to adapt and learn video, but also different styles of business, right? It, it was a really kind of interesting situation for me back when I got started, where 80% of my business was listings. Well, Back when I got started, it actually was more profitable and better to work with buyers because only 27% of listings were selling and buyers were basically going to buy no matter what, as long as you got them under contract. So, you know, as the market starts to shift, you really want to look, as Louis was saying, look at what's relevant to your market. Because ultimately, there's going to be an increase in foreclosures, there's going to be an increase in REOs, there's going to be an increase in investors wanting to capitalize on the opportunities as prices start to shift. So the more you can educate and learn about how to work with different styles of clients instead of just the traditional way, this is how people like Joshua Smith that we both know, we've had come talk to our group, you know, when 0809 happened, he absolutely crushed it mm -hmm. because he niched himself into REOs and foreclosures. And by doing that, and every other agent didn't know a freaking thing about working with a different style of client, he did, you know, 1500 transactions during that period. So I think it's really important to, you know, look at the trends that are happening, what is starting to become more of a focal point, and what kind of opportunities are presenting themselves that you might be able to capitalize on. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. We've kind of switched our market and focus right now um, in our team back to first time home buyers, which is fascinating because, you know, the last two years, um, of this market have been almost impossible in Denver, especially for first time home buyers to get in there, you know, because you're having to put appraisal gaps up front, you're having to drop all this, you're having to get rid of inspections. It's been, you know, a real challenge for first time home buyers. But now, because interest rates ticked up, because there's more inventory on the market and we know exactly what's going on here, there's actually a big opportunity for them to get in. You know, a lot of people here are saying, you know, marry the home, date the rate, you know, so you find a home that's going to work. You get in there, make sure you can afford it, and then you just refinance when these rates come back down. So there's a there's a massive real focus now on first time home buyers because they actually can achieve it again, rather than the last two years being more about you know those people who are moving up or mo moving out of state into different states. So it's a whole different shift here. But again, instead of being like, oh man, like this is all drying up, I'm not sure what to do, you have to just focus and be like, okay, I'm looking at the market. Who can I find who has an opportunity here? 
So an opportunity right now is first time home buyers for us and investors as well. So there's a real shift going on, but all you have to do is be like, okay, I'm taking all the things I know how to do, how to market on social media, how to, you know, to, um, relay the information that I've got into short content to put out YouTube videos relevant to the people that I'm working with and then just target it towards a different market. So now for us, first time home buyers, and we have, you know, about four people under contract right now who are first time home buyers. And, you know, we wouldn't have been able to do this six months ago because the market just wasn't working that way. So, understanding the market and shifting as it goes your business can can keep steady through any shifting market as long as you know what you're doing yeah definitely pivoting is is essential for people in business and this isn't just for real estate but it's for any business um so let's talk about again something that we kind of alluded to which is personal branding and this is one that is really important we all understand hopefully we understand uh that your brokerage brand doesn't matter and it will not save you right there's a lot of people that go to certain brokerages and you know think that because they're here they're anywhere and they've got this luxury branding that you know the brokerage brand is going to be their saving grace when times get tough and i'm here to tell you for example think about your own market and just think about the the number one brokerage that everybody talks about where all the top producers are right now. What you'll see at 100% of brokerages is that there's amazing agents that crush it at every brokerage. And there's absolutely terrible agents that do <laughs> zero to two deals a year at every brokerage. The thing that you guys need to wrap your head around is if the brokerage brand mattered, every agent at the brokerage would be crushing it. There would not be agents that are doing zero to two deals a year at that brokerage if the brokerage brand was bringing clients, right? So it's something that people need to really understand is that even at our brokerage, the brokerage brand doesn't matter. It's all about the ones that have the strongest personal brand. And again, one of the things that you have to understand with these shifting markets is it's not just about gaining market share in terms of the transactions. It's about gaining mind share of the clients. Because mm -hmm. what happens is a lot of the agents that came, kind of came into the industry over the last couple of years looking at this gravy train to ride, they're going to be out of the business, right? So if you look at 0809, not saying it's going to get like that, 60% of agents did not renew their license in 0809. So where do you think the clients in those 60% went? To the 40% that were able to weather the storm. And of those 40%, the ones that started to double down on brand to become more recognized and not just become, but remain top of mind, those were the ones that really come out the other side as, you know, maybe you went into a correction as a low to mid average producer, you come out the other side as a top producer. And this mm -hmm. is a really important thing um, because as you're going to see agents, as we wrote here, agents that build the strongest brand during difficult times come out the other side as the most recognized brand. And it's an opportunity for you to, to not just show, but also tell clients what makes you different. And this is something that I personally did in a slow market when I got started is all these other agents when the market was shifting and getting difficult were they were stopping to spend money on high quality photography for their properties. If a property was under a certain price, they wouldn't do video. They were not spending money on advertising. So they weren't showing clients that they've got skin in the game. And if you start to lean into this and look at this as an opportunity to just show clients that you're going above and beyond, instead of just telling them that you will, it's going to be a really powerful play for you to be able to, again, have a case study and a portfolio of the quality of work that you're doing while everybody else's quality is diminishing. So I really think this is going to be an important time for people to create, identify, and really lean into the brand play here. Um, because one of the things that not many people talk about is the agents with the strongest brand make the most amount of money, not in the way that you might think. It's not just the fact that you're going to have more deals and more clients, but it's the cost per acquisition of a client. Because a lot of people that don't have a strong personal brand have to spend a ton of money on Zillow leads. You have to rip Facebook and Google ads until you get a client and spend months nurturing them, following up repeatedly, and time is money. So it takes time, which thus increases the cost per acquisition of a client. Whereas if you build a strong personal brand, clients come to you, which means the acquisition cost of a new client can at times be free. So it's not just going to increase, you know, your credibility in the industry and have people coming to you, but it's also going to skyrocket your profit margins at the end of the year as a realtor, because you're not having to go out and constantly, you know, pay a ton of money to actually get a client. Yeah. I mean, brand is everything. I, I made the fatal mistake, as you well know, of moving to a brokerage where I thought the brand was going to be everything for me and, and build my business. And, and it wasn't quite the case, you know? So obviously when, when you and I start partnering together, I really realized what I was doing with my brand, but you know, we keep talking about this two for 20, right? It's like in this next two years, 
if you can solidify your brand and pivot with the market, it's going to set you up for the next 20. And I've been thinking about that a lot recently. I've been, I've been thinking about case studies, um, you know, of people how that happened like yourself who started in that kind of time uh, you got joshua smith like you're saying you got ryan serhan you got grant cardone people who started in these times and as the market shifted they went hard they went so hard and just kept on going with the vision and out of the end of that look what's happened to these insane brands you know and it doesn't have yeah. to be as stratos as stratospheric as you know ryan serhan or whatever but for me it's this two for 20 in this next two years if we can pivot and focus on our branding and focus on serving you know the people who are going to be shifting in this market it's going to set you up as an agent for the next 20 um and i think this is one of the most important things we can do right now Oh, yeah, it's it's such an exciting time. And again, I think it's, you know, one of these things where it's like, you know, a lot of people that are in the stock market will talk to you about, you know, when uh, things go on sale, everybody starts running, whereas it's, you know, away from it where you should be start running towards it. And as we start to see people get fearful of the market, this is the time you should be doubling down, not backing off. Right. So um, another really important thing, and this is actually kind of to Louis's reference of him making a mistake personal brand wise. This was actually my mistake um, when I got started in real estate was not prioritizing a database and CRM. Right. Mm -hmm. Because when you start looking at this, if you talk to 100 percent of top producing agents, all of them will tell you the majority of their business comes from repeat and referral, which comes from properly leveraging your CRM. The unfortunate part is if you look at every average to mid-level producer, they're hanging on by a thread because they're just chasing the next deal, chasing the next deal, one more, one more, one more, and they're not leveraging what they already have. And what you'll see, and a lot of people will talk about this in like e-commerce that sell products, but it also relates to our industry, which is that the cheapest deals are from people that you've already worked with before or through a referral of somebody that you worked with before, right? Because the connection's been made, it's warm, and it's almost like, okay, if you get a repeat client, the obviously enjoyed working with you. If you get a referral, that's a warm extension to somebody saying, Hey, I loved working with Louis. Um, so you definitely got to rock with this guy. And it's going to make sure that you have less competition in terms of going up against multiple other agents for buyers presentations or listing presentations. But again, when you look at the cost per acquisition of your clients, if you properly leverage your sphere, the kind of average going, uh, I guess, stat is that if you properly leverage every client that you worked with over the lifespan of your career, that should turn into seven more clients if you nurture them properly. Well, when you look at, at you know how most agents approach the business which is always going out and getting more you have to again spend money on ads or spend time creating content then when you get the leads you have to spend months nurturing them hope to god they respond hope you get you know then you have to book the appointment then you have to build the relationship and then you have to get the contract it's like it's so much more work and time and stress and thus leading to so much more money in order to get new clients instead of prioritizing the ones that you already have. Um, but also it's going to be a really cool opportunity to get referrals from people who are working with other agents in the industry that leave. Because as we talked about, as time gets more difficult, a lot of these agents that just do their two, three, four deals a year and got into it just because they know a few people and want to make a few bucks, well, they're going to be gone. So now those people, those clients that potentially would have been working with them. Okay. So the next thing is, again, really the opportunity to get referrals from people that leave the industry, because there's a lot of people that over the last couple of years get into the industry uh, just to do their two, three, four deals because they know a few people and they see it as an opportunity to take, make you know, 10, 20K per deal. And it's kind of like a side hustle to them. But what happens is when those agents leave the industry because they realize that it's no longer a gravy train, the people that would, uh, you know otherwise would have been working with them are now looking for a new agent. And if mm -hmm. you can get referrals from people that you've worked with that are connected to those individuals, it's going to be a really cool opportunity to capitalize on the agents leaving the business. Um, but more importantly, guys, it's a really good opportunity um, to build a solid foundation to build off of once the market turns back around. Because the market will turn back around if you look at any correction, recession, crash, whatever the heck is going to happen. The Usually the average is that it lasts 18 months. So if it lasts 18 months, that means it's based on 100% of history, it will come back in due time. And honestly, not as long as many people are forecasting. So if you start to build a proper foundation, when things do get hot again, or start to kind of, you know, point in the right direction, you're going to have a solid foundation to build off of. The problem is that a lot of people are, again, hanging on by a string to the point where they're doing whatever they can to weather the storm. And then when things come back and they actually start to get more clients than they were expecting, they don't have the foundation to actually properly service those clients to the point where things start to slip through the cracks. Yeah, I, I mean, 
that's it's a huge part of my business, like systems. I mean, as you know, we're, we're put, going to be putting out a challenge pretty soon here all about systems and processes, but like it's the kind of boring part that no one wants to talk about <laughs> inside yeah. of what we do. We love going showing houses. We love making videos. We love doing this, but like having everything set up in the background, all your systems running efficiently will make your job not not just more profitable but more enjoyable honestly when you have all this running in the background and you just know what you're doing to service all these people like deals just start flowing 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 so it's like it's a big thing i don't know why it's such like a a thing that realtors just can't get into they can't get into their crm they can't put a system together they can't figure out how to flow all and make sure that everyone's being followed up with properly not on drip campaigns um but when you have this and you put it into your business like that's how you create a mass database and you create deals just coming to you instead of having to go out and find them and find them and find them. So for me, like systems and processes, database, CRM, like that's everything for me. And, you know, like you're saying, the top producers out there, they all do the same thing. Yeah, 100 percent. And I think a lot of people are just, you know, really shy away from the not so sexy stuff. And you have to understand that this is a this is a business, right? And in business, you don't get the luxury to just do the stuff you want to do until you've built the business that allows you to do that. You have to do the stuff that is boring, that is monotonous over an extended period of time to earn the right and the ability to just do what you want to do. And that comes from building a proper foundation. Um, so again, it's one of these things that, again, similar to you, Louis, kind of blows my mind. If you look at 100% of top producing agents and they all say, this is what I live by. <laughs> Why would you not be doing that if they're all saying this is what I live by, right? It's yeah. like saying, you know, going to talk to LeBron James and saying, how do you shoot a basketball? He's like, I do it this way. And you being like, nah, I'm going to do it a different way, right? I'm going to do it my way. Well, it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I think we take that on surface level so much, you know, especially like you're saying with athletes, you know, we switch it to that. We look at Kobe, we look at LeBron and stuff. You see the end product but you didn't see the years that went into it, the thousands and thousands and thousands of reps and shots that it took to get into that place. And we, you know, we all look at the stories, we, you know, we look at videos, we read books and stuff and get inspired, but like that stuff is real and you have to do it. If you want to build this successfully, you have to get in the dirt and you have to do the things that you don't want to do. Big time. Yeah. And that's kind of, you know, perfect segue into this pre oh, slide, the second yeah. last slide, guys, before we kind of uh, bring a full circle here for you. But you have to be willing to do what others aren't willing to do. Right. And this is one of the things that I really thrived in as a new agent in, um, you know, one of the slowest markets in North America, as you know, with no experience is I kind of looked at this as an opportunity to say, hey, a lot of people are going to back off on their effort, on their effort, on their spend, on their activity. Um, this is a really good time to double down on what they aren't going to be willing to do. So for me, again, you know, I swear by the modern way of doing real estate, my whole channel on YouTube is primarily focused on the modern way of getting clients, leveraging social and digital strategies and things like that. But in the beginning, 50% of my listings in my first two years as an agent came from door knocking and they were million dollar listings, right? I broke into luxury space in four months. And this is something where, again, a lot of agents are going to stop doing these activities because they think that, again, if they go door knock now, the whole street's going to be willing to sell. If they go door knock in six months from now, it's going to be few and far between. But mm -hmm. what you'll see is that there's still always going to be people, if you have the right script and the right approach, that are going to take interest. But it's not just about getting people that are ready to move today. Again, 50% of my listings in my second year came from the door knocking I did in the first six months as an agent. So this goes back to, again, it's not just about looking at the instant gratification approach of, can I door knock today and get a client that wants to sell tomorrow? It's how many people can I start to add to my sphere and my CRM and my database so that as time goes on, if I stay in touch with them, they're going to think of me as we start to progress. And this is really important because it's a delayed gratification approach. You will find people that are ready to rock today. Um, but the intent, the mindset, and the expectations you should have is this is building the foundation that I'm going to be able to scale off of. One of the things that I did really well was attending and hosting networking events. One of the best ways to expand your reach as an agent is to start to tap into other people's audiences, right? And in real estate, if the market shifts and we are starting to struggle a little bit, well, so are all the other businesses out there because people are spending less money. They're not, you know, seeing an increase in their wages. Living costs are high. So all the restaurant owners, all the product owners in your local market, they're feeling it too. 
So if you can bond with them and build a connection and work together to help each other through these times by doing content with them, promoting their business, getting them to share you with their audience, it's a really great way to expand your network. And then again, as Louis said, if you double down for the next two years, you're going to set yourself up for 20 years of massive success. And where everybody else starts to decrease their ad spend, everybody else starts to run less ads, everybody starts to put out less content, they start to regress instead of progress. This is the time where again, you should be doubling down, increase your ad spend, increase the volume of your content. And I practice what I preach. I just mm -hmm. increased mine. Um, I started increasing the cadence and the, the frequency of my own content. I started spending more money on ads because I see it as an opportunity that if all these other agents are spending less, that means the ad space is less saturated, which means that it gives a better opportunity for your stuff to stand out. Yep. I, I mean, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, I, I was thinking as we're talking there, it's just doing one more thing. Like, you know, one of our mentors, Ed Milet, you know, his recent book that came out, The Power of One More, the whole premise is about you're closer to your goals than you think. And it could yeah. just take one more thing to actually get you there. So what does that look like? If you're a door knocker, you know, one more home, going out one more day a week, putting out one more video every week, you know, putting one more system in place. It's really just these things where... That's what's going to separate the people who pivot right now and get their mindset right for this shifting market is what is that next thing you can add in, you know, and we've gone over obviously a lot of it, you know, today, but, you know, and we'll jump into like video and branding more in depth here in the next couple of videos, um, but shift and picking just one more thing. What can I focus on? What can I do? I'm going to increase ad spend for one more week, one more month, like whatever that looks like. And really just going for it here, because like you're saying, Mike, People are going to start dropping off. People are going to bring it down. People are going to calm down on what they're doing. But as we increase, we come to the top of the heap and that's what's going to set us up. Big time. It's it's super exciting. And that kind of is, is again, another great segue, guys, into the last slide that we have here to kind of bring it full circle for you. Segways um, in my jam. Exactly. You're crushing it. <laughs> I think it's destiny, but this is, again, it's a mindset game, guys. You know, business is not a game of intellect. It's not a game of wealth. It's not a game of experience. It's a mindset game. If you look at, you know, your biggest uh, competitor is the one that's looking you straight in the mirror, right? It's, you know, the biggest limitation to your business or your own excuses. And you're the one that you're competing against because a lot of people have this mental battle where they know they need to go prospect, but they can't do it because they can't get their head in the right space, right? They're mm -hmm. not looking at the opportunity. They know they need to put out content, but mentally they're holding themselves back because of low self-esteem, limiting beliefs and self-sabotaging behavior. So this mm -hmm. is a mindset game. And this is why it's really important to work on your mindset. It's really important to, again, Louis and I are both in Arte, to be getting coached by people that can help you on a weekly basis get your mindset. We do this within our organization at the Wolfpack as well, is we've got one mastermind call a week entirely dedicated to mindset, making sure that you're reading books and keeping yourself in check because... Hell, it's a lonely business. It's a difficult business. It's not an easy one. And mm -hmm. times get tough. Like, even though I'm in a position that a lot of agents are, you know, wanting to get to someday, I still feel the pressure every single day. There's stuff that I don't want to be doing. There's days where I wonder why the heck am I even doing this? And, you know, what's going on? And this is why, again, you really need to work on your mindset. But one thing is just for understanding that this is the greatest opportunity and it's not a threat right? It's a threat for the agents that have weak mindsets. It's a threat for agents that aren't willing to adapt and aren't willing to kind of get outside of that comfort zone. And that's kind of another point is you have to make sure that your comfort zone doesn't become your kill zone. A lot of people stay in that comfort level where they don't want to learn these new skills or adapt new strategies. And that ends up killing the business, right? So this is a really big opportunity, not a thread. And the ones that are willing to do what others aren't are going to come out the side of uh, the other side with things that other agents aren't going to have, which is massive momentum, a ton of clients, top of mind brand awareness, all of these things that you've been waiting for for years and haven't quite had, the easiest time to get all of it is now, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of when the market is saturated with 70,000 agents in your market and it's difficult to break through because things are selling in 12 hours, well, you know, 200 grand over list price. Well, when times get more difficult and you have to be better at communication with your clients, you have to be better at marketing, you have to be better at branding, you have to be better at over delivering um, and creating a better experience. This is your time to shine. Um, and the best way to do that is again, remind yourself why you're doing this. A lot of people give up because they forget why they started. Right. And if you're watching this and you made it to this part of the 
video at the end here, you probably got started because you want to create a better life for yourself, but not just yourself, but also your family, your kids, your spouse, you know, your parents, whatever your situation is in terms of your lifestyle. But you did this, you got into real estate, not to live average, not to be average, not to just give up when times get tough. You got into this industry to crush it and to build the lifestyle you've always dreamed of where you can travel, you can take time off, you can do your passions and hobbies. Why would you give up now? Because what you'll see is that if you look at, again, any top producer that has been in the business for 20 years, whatever the situation is, they've gone through multiple market corrections, right? They went through 9-11. They went through 08, 09. They went through all of these other, you know, early COVID days and things like that to the point where they were able to weather the storm. And if you can really separate yourself during this time, you're going to come out the other side with massive momentum. Um, and the last thing, and this is probably the most important biggest takeaway that's going to separate you from agents during this time is focus heavily on income producing activities, time management, and leveraging what I do, which is a daily power list. The problem that a lot of agents have is that they fill their calendar with things that they want to do, not that move the needle in their business that they have to do, right? They're spending an hour designing a freaking thumbnail on Canva <laughs> because they want to save a $10 expense instead of looking at that as, hey, let me outsource this to a dude on Fiverr that does this all day, every day, and is going to make it way better. Let me do a $10 investment into my business, take that one hour and go prospect for another hour. Because if you go prospect for another hour, as long as you get, you know, a hundred calls in, which you easily can, stats are 1% of those are going to turn into clients. Mm -hmm. If that average commission to your business is $8,000, for example, well, now you just traded $10 for 8,000. Look at the return on that investment, right? So you need to focus on the things that are moving the needle in your business, which is lever you know, following up with your sphere, creating value-driven content, uh, making sure that you're going to attending networking events to expand your network, making sure that you're prospecting. All of these things should be the priority. And truth be told, your day can be done by two o'clock if you just focus on these things. But people are working exhaustive hours because they're doing all these kind of little activities that are distractions from doing what they know they need to do. So if you really lean into this and all the power list is from Andy Frizzella is five income producing activities per day that move the needle of your business. If you do that for a hundred days straight, your business will be in a completely different position than it is today. Yeah, hundred percent. I use that too. Um, and like you're saying, I think we have a tendency to like fill our calendar from like, you know, okay, I'm going to get up at 5 a.m. and just start and I'll be there till, you know, 9 p.m. And if you really audit yourself truly, you probably at least four to five hours in there are are just filled with nonsense. You get sucked in a YouTube vortex. You'd start building things on Canva. You're doing things that just are not worth your time. So that power list for me, if you can knock that out, sometimes you'll knock that out by 11 a.m. if you're really on top of it. And then the rest of the day can be taking phone calls or doing whatever you need to do um, with your business. So I think this has been a super powerful call. Uh, you know, like I said, this is going to be the first in the series of three. We're going to do another couple of videos. And uh, next one's going to be on um, personal branding. And then we're going to jump into video, which obviously Mike is you know, the expert on. Um, but super powerful. But we want to hear from you guys too. As this market is shifting, what we want to hear is what you're doing or what you're going to do, what you're, what you're, you know, going to commit to doing after seeing this video, you know, we're happy to talk with you about it as well. There's a lot of agents that we help get through this business who have maybe just come in the last couple of years and are trying to pivot. They haven't kind of gone through this market shift yet. So I'll comment below, let us know what you're doing. Remember again, people who comment below, you can um, win a free um, membership to the social agent Academy, which is a game changer. A lot of the video stuff that we've been talking about today is a blueprint of how to do it step by step by step taught by obviously one of the best in Mike here. So what you need to do to get that is subscribe, like this video, comment below on what you're going to do in this shift, and you'll be entered in to win um, that uh, membership. So really, really awesome opportunity. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate your time. I think this is going to be very, very helpful for a lot of agents and looking forward to jumping into the next two videos with you here. So we will see you on the next one, guys.